Um, next, I want to invite Sandra Montes -Mart Martinez. She's the pastor of Monte Hora Mennonite Church in Dallas, Texas. She's also the moderator of Iglesia Mennonita España. And uh, she will tell us kind of what is happening in her neck of the woods, of, uh, and as well as larger um, churches in the um, IMH, um, of what is happening in the larger churches as well as locally. Um, Sandra, would you like to share with us what is happening? Sure, thank you so much if everybody that is connected. This afternoon, I think uh, this is a very important subject that concerns all of us. Is a, is a matter of the church and, and we are in a stage of emergency at this point. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share with you some of the stories of uh, the community, local community and the broad community uh, the, of the Hispanic churches. Um, as you all know, and some of you work with uh, Hispanic communities in your uh, local, local settings, uh, this is like uh, a matter of emergency at this point. As a pastor of the local congregation, I am uh, dealing with this uh, firsthand. We have two families in uh, our congregations. They are being um, uh, effectively affected directly for the situation of the uh, family separation. Uh, the most recent one is the Castaneda family. Um, we have one of our church members uh, is been here in the United States for 30 years. Um, she lived in Guatemala because of the economic situation and she lived in Guatemala a daughter. At that point, she was six years old. And um, Herman Emilia remarried in the United States and make another family, have other two kids here. She is still is undocumented. Uh, after 30 years been living in this country. And she make, you know, good standing citizen, uh, pay her taxes and try to do the best she can, but still she have the pain that for 30 years she haven't seen her daughter. Well, her daughter had been trying to come to the United States for different reasons, uh, tried to apply for a visa. Uh, five times she was denied for a visa to come to the United States. And her daughter is now married and have a 17 years old son, a 13 years old son and nine years old daughter. Her, her older son is being persecuted by gang members in Guatemala. And she decided you know, to, to come with the older son and try to seek asylum in the United States because of the, of the situation of his, her older son. His name is Eduardo Castañeda. Well, they, they tried to do the right thing. They went to the embassy to apply for a visa and was denied. And they take the risk to cross Mexico and come to the United States to reunite with her mother and grandmother of Eduardo. When they came to the United States, uh, to the border, uh, they was detained and they made this, the, the application for asylum, and it was, they was uh, separate at that time. Eduardo was three months before he was uh, turning 18. That was the urgency that he can bring Eduardo uh, to the United States to be uh, away from gang members in Guatemala. Well, uh, they said they separate the mother and Eduardo uh, and they was waiting for him to turn 18 in order to be deported like an adult and be treated as an adult. Um, we tried many, many as a church and their parents tried many uh, resources, um, different, we, they hire a lawyer. Uh, the church helped with the expenses for the lawyer and uh, the work, the case, worker, the manager case, said, well, we gonna retain him until he turned 18, so he can be processed as an adult and be deported. Uh, we mobilized many different resources with the MCC and with other um, uh, non-profit organizations that advocate and have legal services for uh, immigrants 
and it was a really hard, hard, hard case because we were running out of time because Eduardo's age. He turned 18, being detained uh, for immigration, and he was sent to an adult a detention center uh, to be processed and deported. We didn't give up. We still we use all the resources available, and uh, we we pray. We pray a lot as a community, and we mobilize many churches in the area to pray for this case. Uh, finally, I think uh, it was uh, God's intervention because it was really a lost cause because he turned 18 already and he was already in, in, in line to be deported with his mother. And uh, he was released two weeks ago. Uh, he, he, we, we collect the money because we pay over, over $7,000 in, in fines and um, legal services for him to be released. He's now with his grandma. He, uh, when you talk to Eduardo, the first thing he says is, thank you. Thank you because I was really afraid in those detention centers. It was less afraid when I was with the younger kids, but when they moved me to the adults, I was really, really afraid. I cry in silence, he says, but I'm a man. So I need to, I need to be uh, strong for my mom. And, uh, and you can see the, the fear, you can see the, the terror on that kid to be treated as a criminal when he was just a kid trying to, to run from, from the very uh, um, situation that he came to find in the United States. We thank God for the, 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 the people that help us and to collect the money and the resources, legal resources, to be able to help Eduardo and his mother. His mother, his mother was the poor, but his purpose was not to stay here. His purpose was just to bring Eduardo, to save him from the gangs and from the pandillas in Guatemala. So um, his, her purpose was, was uh, complete, so she, she said, well, now I can be deported, no problem, I just want to save my son. So this is the things that we deal every day as a pastor. And I'm not the only one, and many of the congregations uh, here in Texas and around the United States are dealing with similar cases. We have another case in our congregation, Bunny Morales, she was pregnant and her daughter, four years old daughter, uh, she hear that they're not giving asylum and they separate the kids. So she decided to cross the border and just cross uh, the river. She was for six hours with the water up to here, carrying her little daughter in her shoulders. So not wrong, and she been pregnant. She was, she just give up and decide to turn herself to the immigration. At that point, they were separated from the from the four years old daughter, and they put her in what they call the freezer box. It's a very cold cell. And uh, since she was pregnant, they let her go for after four days, and they bring the, ba the her daughter back, and we was able to collect the money to pay for the fine, and she was able to be here after four days. Eduardo spent three months uh, in 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 a in a cell, in a jail, in a detention center, waiting for the process when it was released after four days. But the fear, just imagine yourself, be in a river, holding from tree, from branches, being pregnant, and a four years old on your shoulder. Just because the conditions on her country, Guatemala was unbearable for her. She's a young girl, she's 22 years old. 
and she was just looking a better life for her and for her daughter. This is just in my local congregation in Monterey here in Dallas, Texas. I can spend all this time telling you stories, real people, real names. They are suffering from being separate. They are trying different ways. Many people say, why they don't look for legal ways? Well, they try. They came to the border looking for asylum. Well, they've been forced to go through but they're in harm's ways to try to cross the border. We have families that um, uh, apply for family petitions and been waiting for years, for eight, 10 years, while they, their kids are running out of time because of the situation in their, in their countries. Then I come here because they want to go through this. I hear many times the question is, how can a mother or a father can put their kids through that? It's need. They have a need. They have a, a situation that sometimes we are not related to because we, we don't even imagine what it's being to be in extremely poor situations or being threatened by gang members. Every, every church in the Hispanic church, in the Mennonite church, have a family like this story, or somebody close to the church with the stories. We just uh, ask for help. Abu Kay is the best and the strongest uh, help we think we can do. Send letters, write letters to your representatives, to, to your senators, to your uh, um, governments, send email, phone calls, activate people to vote. Um, use social media. We have a really strong tool nowadays, social media. Send a specific stories to, to, the, to the congressmen, to the senators, that they can see the reality of the people. They can see their names. They can see their, 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 their real stories. It's just not numbers. For us, as, as immigrants, everybody is not just a number. It's just a name, it's a person, it's a face. It's a story behind what we see. So please be advocate for the immigrants. So please show Jesus love because if we can put the law before even our polit political convictions, I think we really, we're really, really doing the right thing. In Iglesia Menente Hispana, we um, try to connect resources like MCC resources, um, a, um, non profit organization resources, connecting with people that really need this legal aid. We have, we distributed the, the cards, Know Your Rights, the MCC um, 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 made, and this is a very important tool. Please bring MCC to your communities and, and open the congregations to, so that the people can know their rights. This is a, a tool that MCC give us to all of us, and it's available for, and it's people. <laughs> bring these uh, stories to your community. Education and advocacy is a very important um, tools in this critical situation we live in, in immigration in our nation. Thank you so much for you guys that are doing the active. Thank you so much for opening the doors. Thank you so much for being active. <laughs> To, to for in the detention center, dealing with the families, giving the welcome to the families. Thank you so much for all of you. And let's keep working together. <laughs>